Hello Desert Bearhawk fans. As you can see it is very late in the shop. 20 or 18 minutes to 1 a.m. And I'm shooting this video because I have completed the left flap. Um, and by completed I mean I've completely, completely fabricated it. I still have to take it back apart, take out a bazillion Calicos, etch and prime the parts that are not primed, and then I need to start riveting it back together, which means I'll Coleco it all back together with a bazillion Calicos. And uh, once I can feel my fingers again, I'll start riveting it. So a couple things to note. Um, you'll see these straps right here, these uh, cargo straps. I'll show you what I did with those on the other side. But you can also see a string line right here. That string line runs across the back of these ribs. It's a little out of whack now because I've kind of moved it. But basically what I'm doing is making sure that the trailing edge is going to line up. It's all pretty close. You know, each one of these ribs kind of has its own little personality. But once the trailing edge goes on to the trailing edge of the ribs, we'll be in pretty good shape. So as you can see, the gussets are all in place. Everything's riveted or uh, clicked in. Now, one thing I am concerned about, and I don't know, you can't really see it, <clears throat> but uh, didn't really think about the edge distance of the <clears throat> of the hole that I drilled here, and not the edge distance to the edge, but the edge distance to the vertical portion of this uh, spar web. I'm hoping I can get my dimple die in there without having to grind it up too much. Pretty sure I'll be able to do it. If not, then uh, perhaps I'll buttonhead rivet the whole thing and call it good. Because I know one thing's for sure. I'm not making another left flap. So we'll just kind of keep working our way through it and it'll be, it'll be fine. You can see I blocked up the trailing edge to allow these Clecos to clear. As we come around, you'll see on the front side here, down low, you can see... That strap out of the way, I got a little block that's sitting on now. The reason I have these two straps, there's one there and one over there, is when I first put this flap down on the table, it wasn't sitting 100% flat. It was kind of curling up, specifically on this end, on the, uh, let's see, flip it over, turn, whatever end this is, was, was curling up maybe a quarter of an inch. And, of course, that uh, induced a little bit of panic. And I thought, well, I'll strap this thing down flat. I'll drill in the last rivet holes across the spar, and we'll see. Well, now I've got the strap loose, as you can see here. It's pretty loose, and I can't really move this up and down. It's, it's right on the blocks now. Perfect. And there's another block. There's one block at each hinge point, so there's another one. The third one's over there. So if you get to this point where you're putting your flap together or your aileron I suspect will be the same way and you're working your way through it and you flip it over and it's not exactly straight but you haven't drilled the second spar flange like I had on this one don't panic just pull the thing straight where you need it lock it down and then start drilling your holes so I made uh, I made one mistake well I've made more than one mistake but I've made one mistake that's Kind of irritates me. You'll notice that right here I have two number 30 Calicos. Well, this hole is a number 30. So I switched out my bit and my drill. Boop, boop. To the number 30, drilled that hole. And then got all rambunctious and immediately drilled that hole. Before and we, you know, I caught it before I got all the way through, but you know, I already started, so I had to put put another 30 there as well. So if you're gonna use one drill and you're flipping drill bits back and forth, make sure you got the right drill bit. When you get in the production mode, you might hose that up. Um, another thing you can see here too, I'm sure you can see it, but you can see it looks like a shadow line right there, a quarter inch line right on this aluminum right here. And I used a special tool to, uh, to make that. And uh, if you don't have this tool in your shop, you must, you must, purchase one it's this little guy right here I'll try to hold it out so you can see it um, Cleveland aircraft tool and supply sells them they're 40 bucks As you can see it's got 
come up close and see one of the little wheels has got a bevel on it. And you clamp your material in between, lock it down, and you pull it, pull it across the face of the material. And what it does is it puts just a slight down bevel in your aluminum. So when you put the two sheets together, this little edge becomes an interference fit. And as you pull the sheet down with the Coleco, this edge becomes, I can't even get my fingernail up underneath that. It. It's so tight. But if you were to do it without doing that, it has a tendency to cause this edge to buckle up. So when you drive the rivets in here, and then when you're all done, you've got, an, you know, this edge is not flat on the material, but it's actually buckled up. So very handy little tool. Yeah, I know it's just a $10 pair of vice grips with two rollers on there, but um, it's precision and it works really good. And if you're fabricating an airplane, if you're building an RV, or if you're building a bear hawk, if whatever you're building, and you got sheet metal that laps over each other, like this does here, absolutely have to have one of those right there. Don't buy the cheap imitation. Get the one from Cleveland to build an airplane, so spend the 40 bucks. Other than that, everything seems to have turned out pretty good. Got some minor tweaks to make. Um, you'll notice this Coleco doesn't sit square. The reason for that is, is that I was moving through the shop and I hooked my belt loop on this Coleco and I pulled it over and I dented the material right there. So when I get this apart, I'll put this on a flat surface and beat that dent out, that little crease. Won't hurt anything and we'll be on our way. The other thing I need to do is I've got to cut out my holes here cut this section of the leading edge out for each one of the hinges. There's one here, one here, and finally one down here. And I've decided, I've been sitting and thinking for quite a while about it, and what I've decided to do is I'm going to prime everything, and I'm going to assemble the entire flap 100%, every rivet, every everything, and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut this out, and I'll just work it with the file and get it right flush up to the nose ribs, and it'll be a perfect little pocket. Then. I'll probably go back in and reprime this one area because I'm sure it'll get a little, a little fouled up. But uh, other than that, not much, uh, not much to it. Just a lot of time. Um, I told you I was going to get a bazillion Calicos more. Well, there's what remains of the 200 I just got today of the silver ones of the number 40s. So, doing an airplane project, you're going to have a lot of money in Calicos. But every single hole in this project right now has got a Coleco in it. Um, so it is, it, it's heavy too. I sure hope that the, when the flap is completed and done and it's uh, ready to bolt on the airplane form, it doesn't weigh as much as it does now because it's damn heavy with all these Calicos in it. So anyways, that's it for the shop. Looks like we're on our way. Tomorrow I'll disassemble this. I will etch it and prime it and I will reassemble it again with all the Calicos. And then I will start, oh, actually before I even etch it and prime it, I got to dimple all the holes. Dimple, dimple, dimple. So I'll be doing that all day tomorrow, so I probably won't be able to feed myself dinner at the end of the day. My hands will be so tired, but I'm going to get this all dimpled, and I will get it primed tomorrow, and hopefully maybe even reassembled. So uh, the next update, you won't see any more silver. You'll see, uh, you'll see primer green. All right, until then, we'll see you in the shop.